So how about this for a job? flinging satellites about in space. Well, it's happening next year in South Africa. Hypernova Space Technologies, it's a Cape Town-based company, and they're building an electric propulsion system for small satellites. Founded by Jonathan Lunn, who won the Singularity U Global Impact Challenge research grant a few years back, the company has pioneered the world's only commercial electric propulsion designed for this purpose. Jonathan Lunn joins me now to explain. Jonathan, I understand half of what I've just said, even though I wrote that introduction, uh, but my very basic understanding is that this is a system uh, that is used to move little satellites around in space. Tell me where your interest in space began. Sure. So I've I've loved space pretty much all my life. I I grew up watching uh, you know things like this Apollo space program and the space shuttle, and uh, that kind of inspired me to want to invent things and uh, be become an explorer in a way. And uh, I was really lucky to be able to get a chance to study uh, at WITS and at Stellenbosch and and get part of the satellite program there. And eventually, yeah, it just led up uh, over the years to, to forming Hypernova. Okay, so talk to me about this electric propulsion system. Does it actually launch the satellites into space or does it just move them around once they're there? Sure. So it's not like a, a rocket engine, like a SpaceX rocket. So it only moves your satellite once you're ready in space. Uh, the really interesting thing about space is there's not a lot of forces needed to to push your satellite around. So we developed a really simple plug-and-play system that can pr produce a very small amount of force, but in a precise way that you can push a satellite around using nothing but uh, raw metal as a fuel source. So why do they need to be moved around? Sure. So think of it as like cars on a highway. You know, you've got all these satellites uh, flying along in different lanes, but if they're going to collide with the, something up ahead, there's no way for them to maneuver out. So you need a propulsion system to adjust their orbit. Another thing is that satellite orbits decay and they change shape over time due to drag or, or other effects. And so you, you want your satellite to be able to adjust its orbit and position itself to just stay in the same place that it would like to be. So, yeah, propulsion is, is becoming more and more important for the industry, and it's increasingly um, becoming more regulated that, and that uh, satellites have to have the ability to maneuver. So it's just going to you know, enable capabilities that we haven't been able to have before. Talk to me about the, the pirate pioneering aspect of it. And, and this is, I think, where you said just a little earlier that it uses metal as fuel. Break that down for me in simple terms and explain what's innovative and how you came up with that idea? Sure. So pretty much every uh, propulsion system that's been used today is using some kind of gas or a liquid as a fuel source. And that usually means it's got to be pressurized. It has to be, um, it can be quite expensive. It's toxic or it's difficult to handle. And we've completely removed that all away and said we can use something that's cheap and abundant as a fuel source. And that restricts, that doesn't restrict us to using materials not only found on Earth, but potentially also in other places in the solar system. All right. So does this propulsion system get attached to the satellite before it's launched? Yeah. So we'll be one of the systems that gets installed inside the satellite. And in fact, we'll be doing our first flight demonstration sometime next year. That's fantastic. Who's going to be your, your customer? How are you going to make money and create jobs from this great idea? Sure. So there are a lot of companies out there that are launching satellites to do all sorts of interesting things like take imagery of the Earth for broadband internet, uh, for Internet of Things. And they all went launching, you know, these huge numbers of satellites that are that are flying literally 10 times more satellites will be launched in the next five years than have ever been launched before. And they all need propulsion to maneuver. And so we saw this really unique opportunity uh, in this period of time where there's going to be that need and we'll be there to provide that.
That's fantastic. And is it something that is, is job intensive or is it actually not going to create a lot of jobs but possibly bring in a lot of revenue to the company and to the, to the country as well, I imagine? So I think what's really central about uh, the industry is to keep innovating. And so we're always going to need you know, skilled people and engineers and, and people with bright ideas to come up with new ways of, of building technology and thinking of what's uh, possible mm. and, and breaking uh, misconceptions or old assumptions of what could be done. So there will always be a need for, for great people um, to build companies. So, I mean, that's really the, the core of any company is, yeah. is the people behind it. I mean, it strikes me, as you say, you've always had a passion for space, but it's very much about being ahead of the curve and anticipating what is going to be the next requirement of the industry. And I'm wondering when you uh, embark on that, that process of trying to come up with what's going to be the next thing, how you do it. Do you sit in a room and brainstorm with your colleagues? Is it quite a solitary <laughs> process? How do you go about it? Or is it very much data linked and you just start looking at all the facts and the data uh, and, and you go through it logically? I think a lot of it is to do with observing what is happening around the world and looking at trends. And I think uh, places like Singularity University um, emphasize that, that you, you, you notice trends that are happening not just recently, but uh, over a long period of time. Things like the lowering cost of computing power or the decreasing costs of solar energy. And you say, well, we know actually that those things are going to happen. But what will the future look like uh, when we reach those points in the future? And so, for example, with satellites, we know that there are going to be more and more people launching stuff into space. The cost of launching into space is getting cheaper. So what are people going to do when they reach that point? They're going to want to do more interesting things. They're going to man maneuver around. They want to go and explore the moon. So a lot of it's to do with observing what's happening on a macro scale. But a lot of it for, for a company like Hypernova is just talking to people who build satellites and talk to our customers and say, what do they want? What problems do they have? And then say, oh, how can we solve that? And then there's, so you don't find a solution looking, looking for a, a question. You, you ask the questions first and then find a solution. Yeah, meeting needs. Absolutely amazing. Congratulations. I'm looking forward to hearing about when you start moving things around in space. Um, and uh, good luck as you go forward. Thank you very much for chatting to us this evening. Completely fascinating. Jonathan Lunn, co-founder and CEO of Hypernova Space Technologies. Now let's